screen. Hello. Good evening, ma'am. Very good evening. Good evening, everyone. Today we discuss about amino acids. So you know the uh, importance of protein, right? So proteins are very important for body growth and development, right? So proteins are called as body building nutrients. Okay. So proteins, okay. So perform different functions. Okay. For example, blood. So blood contain hemoglobin protein. Okay, so you know the value of blood. Okay, so blood is the essential component for all metabolic functions in the body. Okay, so blood contains protein. So that protein carries oxygen in your blood to every part of your body. Okay, and brain and nerves. So brain and nerves contains the ionic channels, means ion channel proteins. So these proteins are L4 transporting the signaling molecules from one receptor, one cell to other cells. Okay, so you know the uh, reflex actions takes place through the nervous system. Okay, from one neuron to another neuron. So the signals are transferred. 
so that signals are transferred through this ionic channel protein okay so these ionic channel proteins l4 transporting the molecules okay so ion channel proteins present in the brain and nerves l4 a reflex action nervous system functions okay and so some proteins are enzymes okay all enzymes are proteins but not all proteins are enzymes okay all enzymes are proteins but all proteins are not enzymes i hope you understand okay all enzymes are protein molecules only but all proteins are not a enzymes because some proteins are uh, carriers okay some proteins are enzymes some proteins are receptors okay some proteins are antibodies right so different proteins are there in the organisms okay and so there were yes ma'am and you know proteins are also present in the cell membranes okay cell membrane okay and cellular organelles okay cytoplasm so these are contain proteins okay and proteins are l for cellular construction work okay okay you know that cell division okay cell differentiation okay cell enlargement okay all these process takes place with the help of proteins okay next antibodies so you know the uh, importance of antibodies antibodies maintains the immunity of the body okay antibodies fight against antigens okay so these antibodies are also proteins okay okay next cellular messengers okay some proteins are cellular messengers i already told you know some proteins are receptors okay the receptor proteins okay recognize the particles and transmit signal to the other parts of the body okay from outside cell to inside cell the signals are transferred through this receptor proteins and so dear one yes ma'am uh, next muscles so muscle proteins you know that uh, actin filaments okay myosin filaments okay so these are tubulin proteins okay especially actin and myosin proteins are present in the muscle contraction okay actin and myosin proteins help for muscle contraction okay so those are also useful proteins in the body okay next hair and nails okay protein called alpha keratin alpha keratin so that forms your nail and the hairs okay so it is also the major component of the feathers wool claws scales on and ooves in the other organisms clear so the proteins are the body worker molecule and student one yes ma'am ah okay, read this slide once proteins are the body's worker molecules so if you know the importance of proteins so then so you will get the more interest on this concept Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. 
Can you able to see? Yes. Yes. Okay. Finish it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So, you know, so all these proteins made up of amino acids. Okay. So, all proteins composed of amino acid sequences. Okay. So, many amino acids are joined, okay, to form the polypeptide chain. So that is the proteins. So proteins made up of 20 amino acids. Okay. So, so many proteins are there. Means so many amino acids are there. Different types of the amino acids are there. But so in that amino acids, only 20 amino acids involved in protein synthesis. Okay. So those are called protein amino acids. All these 20 amino acids are called protein amino acid the remaining amino acids are called as non protein amino acids answer everyone yes ma'am yeah okay. so now we discuss about amino acids okay. so amino acids are small organic molecules small organic molecules that plays several important roles in the living organism. Okay. And they are the building blocks of the proteins. Okay. And amino acids are the nature's most functionally diverse molecule. And it is a micromolecule, microbiomolecule. Okay. So they serve as the precursors for many biologically active molecules. Amino acids serves as precursors for many biologically active molecules, okay, like neurotransmitters. Okay, so amino acids acts as a precursor for neurotransmitters like uh, dopamine, serotonin, okay, uh, GABA, epinephrine, okay, etc. And local mediators like uh, the histamine, okay, histamine. And energy related metabolites like creatine, okay, citrulline, okay, carnitine, okay, etc. And amino acids serve as a precursor for the oxygen binding molecule like eme. And it is the uh, DNA basis called uh, purines. Okay, amino acids are also the precursors for purine synthesis. So that I already told you, no. So in the Krebs cycle, so Krebs cycle, okay, pathway, L4 precursor for the other biosynthetic pathways, okay. So in that, so the amino acids also plays very important role in the precursors for the other metabolic process. Got it? Answer over. Yes, ma'am. So next, amino acids serves as an energy source during prolonged fasting, during the diabetics. So when the diet is rich in the proteins. So on that time, what happened? So these amino acids act as energy molecules. Okay? And some act as regulators of gene expression. 
expression and regulators of cellular signaling okay and these functions help for growth maintenance reproduction and immune responses in the body clear yeah? so these are the facts about amino acids and so there were Uh, Ma'am, now we are studying about the amino acid that involves only in protein, right? Yes. We discussed the twenty amino acids involved in the protein synthesis. Okay, so that we discuss now. Okay. So see, here they given one table regarding the amino acid derivatives as neurotransmitters. See, so these are the neurotransmitters derived from the amino acids okay so different uh, neurotransmitters given here okay and their precursors given in the second column okay means in the third column for example dopamine so dopamine is okay, synthesized by the phenylalanine or tyrosine protein okay nor epinephrine okay are derived by the Phenyl alanine or tyrosine amino acids. See like that. So many okay neurotransmitters are derived from the amino acid precursors. Clear? Understood, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next, general structure of an amino acid. Okay. So amino acid. Amino acid made up of uh, the amino group. Okay, amino that name is comes from the two uh, molecules. So amino is the amino group molecule. Okay, NH three or NH two. Next acid is COOH carboxylic group. So because of these two molecules, okay, they given the name. Amino acid. Understood? Yes. Amino group and carboxylic acid group. So these two are important molecules present in the amino acid compound. So that's why the name amino acid. Okay. See here. So one carbon is there. Central carbon bind with the Amino group NH two and also bind with the COOH. Got it? And you know carbon has the okay four valence. So carbon has the four bond. So other bond bind with the hydrogen group. Okay, and the remaining one bond bind with the side chain. So this side chain determine the Type of amino acid. Okay, R group is the side chain. So if R group becomes CH three, so that is one type of amino acid. So R group becomes any other uh, hydrocarbon uh, or sorry, aromatic ring. So that is one type of amino acid. Okay, so any functional group, okay, added in the R group. So that will that will be the one type of amino acid. Okay, so R group is varied. So then the amino acids are also varied. Okay, see here. So this carbon is the chiral carbon, right? So we, this carbon we call it as a chiral one, right? Chiral or uh, non-chiral? Chiral one. Yeah. See, so this carbon bind with the four different groups. Okay. And this carbon is also called as alpha carbon. This carbon is also called as alpha carbon. Okay, remember. So then, this amino acid is also called as alpha amino acid. Okay. Yeah. So this amino group is also called as alpha amino group. So this COOH group is also called as alpha carboxyl group. 
okay so we can call it as uh, by the addition of alpha okay see here, there are roughly 300 types of amino acids are existed in the nature so only 20 of which serves as building blocks of protein okay so that's why the, those 20 amino acids are called standard amino acids okay standard amino acids are the protein amino acids okay so uh, different uh, amino acids are also there so but what is their function apart from the uh, protein synthesized amino acid so what about the remaining amino acids see here they given total means roughly 300 types are there so in that 300 only 20 amino acids are useful for protein synthesis okay what about the 280 amino acids where this amino acids present what is their use so out of these 280 non protein amino acids so these are function as some are functions as metabolites some are access messengers some are access regulators of biological processes understood everyone clear yes ma'am okay okay so the average molecular weight of an one amino acid is 110 daltons okay see so this is the atomic structure of an amino acid so now we discuss this uh, structural details of the alpha amino acid okay so the alpha carboxyl group has low pka value okay so and therefore deprotonated and negatively charged okay so which one is negatively charged coo minus okay or coo h so that is a negatively charged particle right so that is less pka value okay next so the alpha amino group as i pka i pka so and therefore the protein means protonated and positively charged molecule protonated nothing but more h plus present here okay protonated nothing but more h plus more h plus means more pka value more h plus more pka so nh2 group contain hydrogens okay h plus ions so if more h plus ions so that will be acidic in nature right amino group contain acid group okay so that's why amino group is positively charged molecule okay and amino group has i p k a okay c o o h group is negatively charged and deprotonated and low p k a so please remember these three facts okay understood everyone and so then so here two uh, different compounds are there means different molecules are there, nh2 and c o o h so nh2 you know very well about that so that is positive charge okay co minus is negative charge so then amino acid contain both positive and negative okay so the amino acid is neutral in nature okay but so this neutrality is depend on the side chain okay for example so side chain will be side chain will contain nh2 what happened Side chain contains CH two CH two something something with along with NH two group. So then what happened in the uh, amino acid? Amino acid is acid or basic or neutral? Okay. 
Now tell me. So this amino acid is acidic or basic or neutral. Basic, no. Basic. Basic one. Okay. Yes. So based on the R group, okay. So the amino acid nature is decided. Okay. 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 So then the stereochemistry of alpha amino acids. So alpha amino acids are also undergo chirality and it also existed in two forms. Okay. Lino form and the Dextroform, you know very well about D and L form of compounds, right? L nothing but so when the OH is present on the left side, right? So uh, dextrose nothing but OH is present on the right, uh, right side. So those are called D amino acids. Clear? L amino acid and D amino acid. Got it? So but here. Uh, your OH is not present in the amino acid, right? OH is not there in the amino acid. Instead of OH, so they take taken as NH3 group, means NH2 group. So if NH3 ionic group present towards left side, so that is called L amino acid. NH3 plus group present towards right side. So that is called as dextrose amino acid. Okay, dextro amino acid. Okay, dextro rotatory, levo rotated. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Any doubts? Okay. So, all amino acids found in the proteins are L enantiomers. Okay, so that you remember. So, all amino acids found in the proteins. So all those amino acids are which form? L amino acid form. Okay. So this stereochemistry in amino acids plays very important role in the overall protein structure. Okay. So that you remember. See here, they given few amino acid residues in the protein. So they are L, L isomers. So just look at these structures. This is the yeah, this is the general structure of an L amino acid. So D amino acids also found, but they are found only in the few small peptides. Okay, small peptides only contain D amino acid residues, but all proteins are contain L amino acids. Answer yes, ma'am. Okay. Then next we discuss about the classification of amino acids. Amino acids can be classified by the R groups. Okay. So based on the okay R group. So based on the properties of the R group. Okay, that is mainly the polarity of the R group. Amino acids can be grouped into five main classes. Amino acids can be classified into five main classes. Okay, first one is non-polar aliphatic R groups. Okay, first class is non-polar aliphatic R groups. Means non-polar hydrophobic amino acids okay example the side chains of alanine valine leucine isoleucine glycine methionine and proline so these are contain non polar 
hydrophobic in nature okay second one aromatic r groups so aromatic r groups contains the aromatic ring in the amino acid okay aromatic rings are the r groups so that bind with the amino acid example phenyl alanine tyrosine and tryptophan so these three are the aromatic amino acids got it next polar uncharged r groups polar uncharged r groups serine threonine cysteine aspergine and glutamine so these are the polar amino acids okay next fourth one positively charged r groups so these are basic in nature positively charged r groups so that is lysine arginine and histidine okay and negatively charged r groups so these are called as acidic amino acids okay example aspartic acid and glutamic acid or aspartate and glutamate okay aspartate glutamate understood yes ma'am so these are the classification of the amino acids based on the property of properties of r groups okay this is the structure of the isolated protein okay so that protein will have hydrophobic regions and hydrophilic region both okay and proteins in the aqueous solution so in aqueous solution what happened hydrophilic regions are present towards water okay present towards periphery okay and the hydrophobic regions are present in the inner regions so in the aqueous solution hydrophobic regions are sorry hydrophilic regions are exposed hydrophobic molecules are present inside okay so these are the two conditions in the proteins okay okay so if the amino acids have non polar side chain so those are called hydrophobic in nature those are called hydrophobic amino acids okay so these are uh, buried inside the protein okay so where they are away from the water and can interact favorably with each other so these hydrophobic molecules are interact with each other okay so they are present away from the water understood everyone yes ma'am okay and the polar side chains are called hydrophilic molecules okay so these are present towards water molecules okay so they are appear on the water surface okay okay, okay look at this structure non polar aliphatic r groups just look at these structures non polar aliphatic r groups glycine alanine valine proline leucine isoleucine methionine use your own code words to remember these amino acids use code letters okay according to your convenience so these amino acids contains non polar aliphatic r groups okay and in that find out the methionine contains sulfur group also right so actually normal amino acids made up of carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen right but some or some amino acids contain sulfur also so out of 20 amino acids two amino acids contains 
sulfur. Okay, which are those two iso those two amino acids? One is the methionine. Other one is any idea? Cysteine. Yes, very good. Cysteine. Methionine and cysteine are the sulfur containing amino acids. Okay. Yeah. So these are the non-polar amino acids. So different amino acids will have uh, the different properties. Okay. okay. So the methionine containing okay sulfur groups help for forming the disulfur bridge in the proteins. Okay. So you know proteins have different structures: primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. So the folding of the proteins takes place with the help of disulfide bridges, hydrophobic interactions, hydrophilic interactions and all. Okay. So these hydrophobes, hydrophobic molecules present inside the protein. So those, pro, those hydrophobic forces help for protein folding. Okay. That you remember. Next, aromatic R groups. Okay. Look at these structures. So these are phenylalanine, tyrosine, and triprofen. So these amino acids contain aromatic ring. Okay, aromatic ring. Okay. So these hormones L4, okay, binding sites for the ligands and the substrates. Okay. So I will tell you some interesting facts about this. Uh, aromatic R groups okay. okay so the serine okay threonine and tyrosine so may also become phosphorylated on the protein okay some aromatic amino acids help for phosphorylation on the proteins okay and that involved in the cellular communication okay aromatic amino acids okay help for the cellular communication Okay, so that respond to the growth factors. Okay, and these aromatic amino acids send signals to the cell, so that results in the cellular division. Okay, means cell division. And the genetic defects, okay, so genetic defects, so that allows for the hormone independent phosphorylation. Okay, hormone independent phosphorylation of that protein. So that leads to the cancer. Okay, so due to the genetic defects, so the hormone independent phosphorylation of these proteins results in the cancer. Okay, and the phenol group present in these aromatic amino acids participate in the different mechanisms of enzyme catalyst. Okay, acid base catalyst, nucleophilic attack. Stabilization of the reaction intermediates, okay, like that. Clear? And uh, so these uh, aromatic amino acids are acts as binding sites in the cells. Okay, so these are the binding proteins, binding protein sites. Okay, it also participates in the enzyme catalysis and also help in the electron transfer. Okay. Friends, good everyone. So these are some facts about aromatic amino acids. Okay. So don't worry about their absorption and all. Okay. okay next, so the polar uncharged R groups. Polar uncharged R groups. Amino acids are serine, threonine, cysteine, aspergine, and glutamine. Okay, so these are the polar uncharged R groups. Okay. See, the cysteine is the sulfur containing amino acid. Okay, so the cysteine also help for disulfide formation in the proteins. Okay, so disulfide bond formation in the proteins. So that help for protein folding. Okay. 
just look at the structures just concentrate on the r groups of the amino acids These are the polar molecules. So these polar uncharged uh, amino acids are also participating in the cell to cell communication, signal transduction, okay, uh, cell recognition. Nucleophilic reaction, enzymatic catalysis, okay, disulfide bond formation by the help of cysteine, okay, and glycosylation also takes place by these amino acids and all. Okay, okay see here they given this disulfide bond formation on amino acids. Okay. See, this is one cysteine, okay. This is one cysteine amino acid. This is another cysteine. Cysteine contains alpha hydroxyl group, SH group, bind bind with the SH2 group of the means SH group of the other cysteine amino acid. Here, what happened? So two H plus uh, molecules are released. Okay, two H plus molecules are released. So that will form sulfur sulfur bond. That is called disulfide bond. Actually, this reaction is reversible one. Okay, once the two H plus ions are bind with this sulfide bond, two H plus uh, ions are entering into this bond. So then, these bonds are broken down to form the sulfa hydrogen group. Okay, sulfa hydrogen group, SH group. Understood, everyone? So this is the formation of disulfide bond. So this disulfide bond is very useful for protein folding. So you know the importance of protein folding. So protein foldings only decide the type of proteins. So different proteins will have different modification, means different folding, different folding structure. Some are alpha helix, some are beta pleated structures, some proteins are are 3D structures, some proteins are quaternary structures. So these structures decide the type of proteins. Okay, for example, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is always quaternary in structure. Myoglobin is always tertiary in structure. Keratin is always the alpha helical structure. Okay, so like that different proteins will have specific structure. So that structures are given by the are stabilized by these bonds. Okay, in the protein structure, we discuss that in detail. Okay. Okay, next positively charged R groups. Positively charged R group amino acids are lysine, arginine, and histidine. Lysine, arginine, histidine. Okay, so these are also L4 stabilizing the proteinaceous structures. Okay. Stabilizing the proteinaceous structures. So these are referred to as basic amino acids, right? Basic amino acids. Okay. Next, negatively charged R groups amino acid. So that is aspartate and glutamate. Aspartate and glutamate. So these are the acidic amino acids. Aspartate and glutamate is called as acidic amino acid. Okay. 
understood everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So glutamate, that glutamate is uh, glutamate plays very important role. Okay. So the carboxylation of glutamate on its uh, the uh, gamma carbon, so that allows to bind effectively the cations. Okay. So such as the bivalent calcium is bind. So that is very useful for clotting proteins. Okay. Fibrin. Okay. So that fibrin is formed by the help of calcium. Okay. So that calcium is uh, divalent calcium is formed by the glutamate carbon. Okay. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. Okay. See here. So this is the structure of the lysine. Okay. See. So this is the amino group of the amino acid, CO group of the amino acid, and this is the alpha carbon right first one this is the alpha carbon okay so lysine contains two uh, three four five so total uh, five carbons present in the lysine amino acid so the first carbon is alpha second carbon is beta third carbon is gamma fourth carbon is delta okay fifth carbon is epsilon okay so here covh containing carbon is not a chiral one right that is not a chiral one. Okay. So that's why that's not included in the carbon identification. Answer everyone. So alpha carbon is always start from the chirality of the carbon. Okay. Answer everyone. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this is about the different types of the amino acids. Okay. Here they given the properties and conventions associated with the common amino acids found in the proteins. Okay. Here they have given the pK values of different amino acids will be different in nature. Okay. <coughs> so just uh, glance ones. These are not important. So, but uh, you should know which one, which pK is more, which pK value is less. Just a second, so it was disconnected. Yeah, Are you practice regularly? So if, uh, when you study each topic, after the topic, please try to practice the questions regarding the topic. Okay. I already shared one link regarding the topic related MCQs questions. 
Okay, please refer that. Practice is very important. So many students are preparing for this exam, but so out of that students, so you are also the one of the best student. Okay. So prepare well, okay, and so remember the topics in the tally, okay. So read all the topics clearly, okay. So just understand the topic. So these are the 20 amino acids involved in the protein synthesis. Okay, that's it. So in the next ma'am, we have to learn this structure. No need. Just remember the differences in the structures. Okay. Huh? No need to worry about the complex all the structures, but you should know. So which structures contain which R group? So that you should know. Okay. And just remember the classification that is enough okay so if you know the classification you can easily remember phenyl is nothing but it has aromatic ring okay so estradiol as the positively charged r group so like that you can easily remember so just remember the classification no need to worry about the structures and all okay okay yeah yeah that's it in the next class we discuss about the zwitter ion Okay, so that we discuss in the next class. Any doubts regarding the today's topic? Anybody have doubts? Rujuta, Laya? No, ma'am. Yamini? No, ma'am. Sushma Fernandes? No, ma'am. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. I just uh, messaged you regarding that Lodish book and cell membrane. Yeah, yeah, we'll share test. it. Yeah, okay. I got it. I got it. We'll share it. Okay, okay. Today, ma'am, we'll today's share. presentation, are you going to share it on the group? Yeah, we'll share it. So, only today's okay. presentation, right? What about carbohydrate metabolism? Did you receive that? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, all the four PPTs, did you receive? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 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 Oh, so now share this uh, amino acid slides. Okay. Bye, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma bye. Thank you. Hello, ma bye, everyone. Welcome. Thank bye. you, ma'am. Welcome.